Good morning. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. What a wonderful day it is to celebrate, to celebrate the God that we worship. So now, let's stand and join together in our call to worship. Those who walk according to the Spirit are set free. Let's take a walk. The Spirit dwells in those who walk according to the Spirit. Let's take a walk. Praise God for sending His Son for our sake. This is no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn will be Be Thou My Vision, number 451. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Though my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true My victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my own, heart, whatever be fall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome again to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. We are a safe, inclusive community of faith who are seeking and growing in Christ's love. Uh, I guess you've figured out by now that Pastor Leo is not here today. He's celebrating his birthday. So um, when you see him next, tell him, Hello, old man. Happy birthday. I'm glad you're here today. Whether you're joining us online or you're here in this place in your presence, it's good to see your smiling faces. As we um, come together today, let me remind you of a couple of quick announcements. Uh, you will notice behind me um, Island Vacations. It's VBS time. If you uh, have children in VBS or you want to volunteer in VBS, it's never too late. Our VBS program this year is a little different. We're meeting every Sunday and every Wednesday night for six weeks uh, to do our VBS. So today at 10.15, today at 11.15, Wednesday night, you are welcome to bring your children, your grandchildren, uh, yourself, and participate in VBS. You probably also noticed as you came in today in the narthex, uh, Betsy Ayers and the Angel Tree um, Committee are in the back. It's backpack time for Angel Tree. So on your way out today, stop by and talk to them about backpacks. We support 100 kids whose parents are incarcerated, and this is an opportunity for us to help them be prepared to go back to school. And I think probably for all of us, and I know there are many educators in this room, um, it's important that they go back to school. And it's important that they go back to school feeling uh, that they are part of that school environment so that they don't drop out of school and end up incarcerated. So please uh, see them in the back today. And then lastly, I, I just want to... Um, bring up something maybe you've seen in the newsletter but have not um, have not thought about on Wednesday night Tim McGee are you in the back 
Tim McGee has started a new a new ministry at Bear Creek. Uh, it's community groups, and uh, they're meeting on Wednesday nights. And I would uh, encourage any of you that want to be in a small group that are not in a small group to visit with Tim about joining his community group or starting your own. So keep that in mind today as um, as we go forth. Now, would you please rise, take a look around, see if there's someone you don't know. Uh, I see a few faces I don't know. Say hello. Welcome them to Bear Creek. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Would you please, as you find your way back to your seat, Would you please remain standing as Norma leads us in our affirmation of faith? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Today I'd like to invite uh, Lisa Andreessen to come and lead us in our prayers for the people. It's prayer time at Bear Creek. <laughs> I love saying that. Um, this morning, you know, I, I've uh, done the prayers of the people before recently, and I've talked to you about corporate prayer, but as the Apostle Paul says in his first letter to the church at Thessalonica, um, it's 1 Thessalonians 5, and it's actually three verses, although they're very short. He tells us to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. So this morning, I, Pastor Ron and I wanted to call your attention to a wonderful resource that we have as members of, of the Bear Creek community that I think sometimes gets overlooked. And it's really put together and sent out by a person who works behind the scenes and doesn't often, often get a lot of credit, and that's Deborah Rucker. What you see on these screens up there, yes, give her a hand, please. She certainly deserves it. Um, what you see up there is are what's called the prayer pages. 
And if you're a member of Bear Creek, every Thursday you receive an email from Deborah that is way more than just a list of prayer concerns and people. You probably, that you aren't able to see on the screen up there, but because you know, we are now in the worship space and we think of doing the prayers together. I, we wanted this morning to call attention to our need to for personal private prayer. And this, these prayer pages are a wonderful tool for you to use in your private prayer during the week. First of all, as I said, they are way more than just a list they begin with the actual prayers of the people. And the prayer there is almost always keyed to the scripture for the week and for and the sermon. So for instance, you heard all, you've already heard walk, walk, walk this morning. And the sermon is about taking a walk. Well, the prayer begins like this, Lord Jesus Christ, come in. I, I come in need to walk in the hope that only you can give. My way is unclear. The path is sometimes filled with twists and turns and confusion. So it is about walking with Christ. Then, as our prayer should be structured, as Christ taught us to pray, the next section is praises. And we have there mentions of people who have praises to offer, including people who are expecting God's miracles. It moves on to then the petitions that we have and prayers for safety and for protection for the wider community even because we have lists there of people who are connected to our congregation who are serving in the military and a prayer that you can actually pray for the, them so you don't have to come up with your own. On the second page, you have, we have prayers for our own congregation and members and their friends and families, specifically named people in our congregation. For instance, this week we are to pray for Harold and Kieran, who both had surgery um, and are recovering. And we are to pray healing and of the mind and spirit for Joyce's family. As you know, she passed this week and our last week and Jack Cogbill, Susan Faye Smith. So we do have a few lists there. Then there are lists of people that you may not even know in the wider community that are connected to members of our church, and specifically a list of people who are battling cancer. So one of the things I wanted to mention, too, is that there are at least three ways to contact this the prayer pages and Deborah to be either listed yourself on here or to have one of your family members or friends listed. And I'm going to tell you right now that the prayer team and the prayer ministry follow up on all of these. I recently had a prayer concern that I didn't want to just share widely with everyone. And I I, I use the online means to make a prayer request, and that is one of the three ways you can do this. There's a place on the web page to make a prayer request. You can also call the office to do that. But um, I received a card, a personal card back from the prayer team ministry telling me that they had prayed for this person that I'd asked them to, and it meant so much to me. So. I think that one of the ways that we as a community of faith need to hold each other up and also join our fellow Christians throughout the community of Houston, failed to mention one thing, there's also a sister church every week mentioned in the prayer pages, something local of uh, another church and their minister. Thank you. One of the prayer team just held up the third way to request, a, to make a prayer request is to fill out the card that's in the pew. 
you can look there and see that there's a place to do that. And I would encourage you to do that. So this week, as you are thinking about your own prayer concerns, take a look at that at the prayer pages and use that wonderful tool. Now, what we'd like to do this morning, and this is a little different, but I learned from a prayer team minister at the church I used to go to, First United Methodist Church, when I was feeling very overwhelmed at the growing list of people on our Sunday school um, prayer, t prayer concerns, she's, I said, how do you do this? How do you, you know, pray for all these people? And she said, you know what? One of the things that I've learned to do is when I, I print out the, that prayer list and before I do any of my own private praying, I hold that list up to the Lord and I pray for his attention and for his blessings on all the people that are listed there and all the concerns. And I thought that was a wonderful idea, so I've, I've taken to doing that too. So this morning what we'd like to do is have you virtually hold up this list and we're going to take about 30 seconds of silence just for us as a group to bring the, these people and these concerns to our Father. Father, we thank you that you are a God who listens, who loves us, and who is always present to us. We ask this morning that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, fill all of these, our friends and neighbors and relatives, brothers and sisters in Christ, with the healing and the comfort that they need. Walk with us through this week. Make us aware of the needs of others and always help us to remember that you are with us in whatever space we're in. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. Now let's pray the prayer together that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. If you don't believe in the power of prayer, I promise you there's nothing more powerful. So each of us, every day, should take time to make sure that we do just what Lisa has asked and support our community and our congregation and our friends. Uh, you know, it's been a tough couple of weeks at Bear Creek and I can tell you that through prayer we've been able to comfort the mourning recover some of the grief uh, watch people get healed from surgery and it's all because our Lord listens to the words that we speak thank you very much so it's, it's offering time. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I asked Pastor Leo about this one day. Uh, the church that I grew up in, we always had the offering after the sermon. And it was supposed to be, you know, if you got a good sermon, you got a good offering. So I'm, I'm worried that we moved it before because we're worried about the sermons. Right? But it's offering time, uh, Bear Creek. And as we prepare today, 
uh, to make our tithes and our gifts. It's a preparation of ourselves that we make. Let's remember who we are at Bear Creek, what we're called to do and who we're called to be. And remember that our gifts are the mechanisms that we can use uh, in this community to do the things that God calls us to do. So when we give our tithes and offerings today, remember that they go to all the wonderful things that God does in this community, that God does in this church. So God bless you today as you give. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, accept these gifts of our tithes and our offerings back to you for all that we have has been given from you. Bless each and every one of us this day and the gifts and the tithes that we give to do your work in this world. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
our scripture lesson today. Our reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though through the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to all your mortal bodies, although also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. He condemns sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit please be seated let us pray may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O strength and my redeemer amen In our scripture today, Paul is writing to the people about the incredible transformation that occurs in people who walk according to the Spirit. In these 11 verses, Paul wraps up all of his statements of the first five chapters of Romans. And as we look at them today, we can break them down into four sections. In verses 1 through 4, Paul begins by declaring, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How liberating is that statement? Listen to what he implies. If we are in Christ, we are no longer bound by guilt or shame or weighed down by our past sins. We have that opportunity because the blood of Christ has washed us clean. God sets us free through the crucifixion of his son Jesus. Jesus, in his crucifixion, bore all of our sins, thereby taking them away from all of us. And God sees us as righteous through our faith in Jesus. Verse 3 tells us God sent his son to bear the sins of the world to remove sin because the law had been weak. But be careful. The freedom from condemnation does not give us a license to remain sinners. What it says is we have been set free from the law of sin and death, but only if we walk according to the law of the Spirit. Verses 3 and 4 tell us that God has done what the law was not capable of doing. 
not because the law in itself was insufficient, but because the flesh weakened the law. In other words, it's not the law that failed and allowed sin to overtake these people, but instead it was the flesh of the people that ignored the law. Paul goes on to say that how God overcame this situation was to send his own son in his likeness and in the likeness of sinful flesh so sin could be condemned in the flesh through his crucifixion. In verses 5 and 6, Paul provides us a two-stage explanation of why those who walk according to this spirit inherit life. Paul's logic works like this. First, the two categories, walking according to the flesh and walking according to the spirit, are each characterized by a certain manner of thinking. And secondly, Paul declares in verse 6, to set the mind on things of the flesh is death. But to set the mind on things of the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, he says, the mind that is set in the flesh is hostile to God, and those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. So let's take a walk. What did these contrasted walks mean for you and me in 2023? Paul wrote this letter in the first century in a time when the church was growing but at the same time struggling with the world around it. Do his words have meaning today? I believe they're just as relevant today as the day that he put them in his letter. Before we begin to look at the contrast of our two walk options, we need to understand what Paul is referring to when he uses the word flesh. The flesh for Paul is not the physicality of human nature because human nature is part of the creation. Human nature is what God created in all of us. But rather, for Paul, the flesh is the rebellious and corruptible state of humankind. And in that rebellious and corruptible state, sin has made its dwelling place. You got it? It's not about who we are or what we are or how we look or what we see and hear and smell. It's about the state of mind that we're in. In that corruptible and rebellious state of humankind's minds. So back to our question. What do these contrasted walks mean for you and me in 2023? What they mean is this. We live in a world that presents us with countless reasons to live in the flesh. My friends, we have a choice. Just as the people of the first century had a choice, how do you want to walk? We can walk according to the flesh. We can let our minds fall captive to the ways of the world. We can live our lives listening to what the world says about what is important, what our priorities should be, how we should treat others. We can live our lives thinking that because we call ourselves Christians, because we are the church, because we might volunteer at Mesa or the United Way, that we're better than somebody else. We can live our lives listening to the world that tells us, you know what, the whole world isn't made up of God's children. That some of us are created better than others. That where we grew up or how much we make or where we live or what color our skin is 
places us in different states of being. Pay close attention to what Paul says. Those who walk according to the flesh put their minds on the flesh, and those that put their mind on the flesh are captive to the law of sin and death. It's important to note that Paul begins with our mindset and not our actions. Our walk is about our mindset. It's through our mind and through our thought processes that we are transformed, not through what we do. That went that way and not into our parking lot, right? Okay. We must make up our mind which walk we are going to take. And that choice, my friends, will transform our entire being. If we have a mindset that's centered in the world, we'll find ourselves walking according to the flesh. And we will be captive to the law of sin. We'll find ourselves in the same place that Paul begins. We'll find ourselves in a place where the weakness of the flesh causes the failures of God's law and the victory of the law of sin will be in our lives. However, the good news is there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If we choose to walk according to the Spirit, if we place our mind on the Spirit, we will have life and peace, Paul says. Before we go any further, let's make certain that we understand what that means. Having life and peace does not mean that choosing to walk according to the Spirit eliminates pain and suffering. It does not mean that we will escape a mortal death. What it means that when we are suffering, when we're hurting, when things are tough, that we have a God leading us, walking with us, holding us up, we have peace. It means that we have a new life transformed by the Spirit it means that that life is eternal. So how do we walk that way? Paul tells us simply, if you're not of the flesh, you're of the Spirit. You're in the Spirit, he says, since the Spirit dwells in you. What a wonderful promise but what does it mean that my mindset needs to look like? Let me offer three points. First, the mindset of the Spirit points us every moment of every day to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It points us to the laws of God. Not only the laws of the Ten Commandments, not only to the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount, but especially to Jesus' definition of the greatest laws in Matthew. Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And Matthew tells us Jesus is, and the second is like the first. Not the second, but like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's a mindset on the Spirit that points us daily to conversation with God through prayer, through study of the Word, and worship. My friends, when we let the world and the mindset of the flesh overtake us, we eliminate our time with God. When we let the mindset of the Spirit fill us, then we spend time with God, time in prayer, time reading, time studying, time in worship. And lastly, a mindset of the Spirit 
reminds us that God's grace allows us to slip into the mindset of the flesh and return to the Spirit without the penalty of death. Paul tells us in verse 10, but if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And finally, Paul gives us the why. Verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he says, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. Friends, I'm not the linguist that Paul is. I count on Janet to translate my uh, South Texas drawl. But let me rephrase these words for you in something I can understand. If we choose to walk according to the Spirit, if we have a mindset of the Spirit, we cannot help, listen, we cannot help but be transformed. Because the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Spirit that dwells in us and will raise us from the death of the flesh and give us new life. The question we should ask ourselves today is which walk do we want to take? We looked at Paul's reasoning for which walk to take. Let me leave you with these thoughts. We've been promised the indwelling of the Spirit in our lives. If we choose to walk according to the Spirit, I promise you, you will be changed. When we choose a mindset of the Spirit, it will fill us to the point that there will be no more room, no more room for the flesh. We cannot be changed and not be helped but be changed when we accept Jesus into our lives and walk according to the Spirit that God sent to give us this new life. We live in the world, but we don't have to live of it. We live in this world, but we do not have to live of it. We can live a new life because we walk according to the Spirit. So, my friends, let's take a walk. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you struggling with your walk? Are you ready to start walking according to the Spirit? Are you looking for a church home? If you are, look around. This is a great place. These are great people. These are people that know and feel when you struggle. These are people that have maybe been in that same struggle, fought that same battle. Right? Bear Creek is such a wonderful place to be part of God's work in the world. So if you're looking for a church home or you want to Walk, then text number 832 773 Text Pastor Leo or myself. We'd love to be your pastors. We'd love for you to be part of this walk, this place, because it's a wonderful place to be. So will you stand and let's sing our hymn of invitation? Our hymn of invitation is Trust and Obey, number 467. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with Trust and obey for the 
As we prepare to go from this place today, I want you to take a few moments during this postlude and think about your choice of where you want to walk. Okay. Are you going to walk according to the flesh? Are you going to walk into the Spirit? So as you ask yourself this question today, and as you answer, think about the title of this postlude that Marva is going to play that says, which is, The Savior is Waiting.
Thank you, Marva. You know, every day we get up and then we all have our routine, what that is, that happens after that. So this week I'm going to challenge you to change your routine. Every day this week when you get up, before you turn the coffee pot on, or the radio, or the television, or whatever you do. I want you to just take five minutes with God and say, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to guide me in my walk. Will you do that for me this week? Because I promise you, if you do, you will be changed. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Sunday.